John McCoy. Mr. McCoy, how do you good do? I... How nice to meet you. I do very well, thank good. you. Good, good. Uh, I'll just be looking at your little pamphlet. Don't have yes. to read it. Um, anyway, thank you very much for doing this. Pleasure. Um, you do a lot of talks to schools, do, do, do yes, I? Yes, we've been in a high school today. We're yeah. 11s, 12s, and 13s. So You're right. It's been good. And I mean, that's the... great grades. Yeah. Yeah. What sort of things do you tell them? Well, today we dealt with uh, some of what you'll see tonight, dealing with some of our fossils of giant kangaroos and things like that, and changes that can be observed between the fossils and the present day world, and then challenge them to think about if creation was true, how would you recognise it if you fell out? Right, right. So how old are those, are those fossils? Well, if I was speaking as an orthodox geologist, I'd say anywhere between 100,000 and 10 million, right? Up to 40 million, right? right? So the age is. Is, is, re is a product of our theories about how we view the world. It's not a product of facts, not a product of evidence. No, because, uh, you know, in my own geological research, I'm convinced that what Charles Lyell did to us all was give us a set of glasses to see the world through. So when we believe that whatever carbon-14 or that is doing now, it's always done, we have a philosophy yeah. about how the present connects to yeah. the past. It's not just carbon-14, though, is it? I mean, oh, no, no, it's just a lot. a dozen different radioactive It doesn't really matter, no, because does matter, what you've got a is a philosophy. Ones. You no. have to assume that the present is the key to the past, because well, you weren't there and I wasn't there. Well, that's true. So whatever age you yeah. get, or I get, Nevertheless, starts with faith. But it's not just carbon-14, is it? No, I mean, there's no, potassium, no, no. argon, and they all give the same answer, don't they? No, they don't. Carbon-14 wouldn't give you any more than 70,000 okay, no, years, they even overlap. if it worked. They overlap. They overlap. Uh, uh, well, and they're designed, I mean, we keep yeah. looking for new dating methods well for the simple the reason is. that the last one didn't give us the answers we wanted. That's not true. How, 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 <laughs> how, how old, true, how old do you think the world is? Okay, I believe, just like you believe it might be billions, I believe we've got no more data than is sufficient for six or seven thousand years. And the starting position for both of those is faith. Whether you like it or not, because I wasn't there and you weren't there. Well, you don't have to be there, do you? I mean, there are all sorts of things where, you, where we weren't there, but the detective work, the, the evidence... Well, your chief starting point up. is either history or a faith position that whatever the world is doing now, it's always done. So Charles Lyell said, Niagara Falls is going backwards at one foot a year, divided into the gorge distance. That gives you 35,000 okay. years. OK, you theologians have to bow the knee. Yeah. So there's where it all starts. Whatever yeah. the present world is doing, it's always done. If there were only one method of dating, then you, you might have a point. But since there are so many and they overlap, and you've got dendrochronology, you've got carbon-14, you've got potassium argon, you've got uranium, and they overlap. Perhaps it tells you that they're all using the same assumption. That's well, what it really tells well. you. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you so desperate? I mean, it, it sounds as though you're really on a losing wicket because, I mean, the, no, no, the whole like of science... You need the world to be old for evolution to be true no. because you want to rule God um, out. There's, we've got geology, we've got physics, we've got astronomy, we've got biology. Scientists and all these different disciplines converge upon an age of the Earth which is about four and a half billion years. Now look, 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 let's be honest. They converge on that because they're using Charles Lyell's assumption. The present is the key to the past. That's a fake starting position. And quote unquote from Charles Lyell, my aim is to free science from Moses and he's done it. Except for people like me who are willing to get up and look silly sometimes. Well, it's really fair to say that we have a faith position and then we try to make everything fit. I mean, there are so many different pieces of scientific evidence and they, and they all fit together. We don't have a faith position. If, if the evidence really supported a 6,000-year-old Earth, we, we, we'd agree. Well, look, what, you, what your biggest problem is, Richard, when you deal with scientific evidence, you first of all have to believe things like man is rational, the world is real, and for every real and rational question, there's a real and rational answer. If you don't believe those things, you don't even do but science. Why, why do you apply this just to evolution? I mean, why don't you apply it to, to any, any other science? Why, why don't you believe the world is flat? And, and, you know, for the simple why, reason why I've travelled around it. Well, in other words, you can observe in the present, but here's the problem with this issue, and we need to be honest. We're trying to go backwards. We weren't there. Charles Lyell's book, 1831. Charles Darwin, 1859. If I take Darwin and say, if this is true, what would the evidence be 100 million years ago? Then I'm stepping from the present back into the past. Yeah. I have faith. If I do that with the Bible, I've got to be honest. It's a faith starting position. Anybody who says it isn't yeah. is not telling you the truth. Well, the difference between 6,000 years and 4.6 billion years, it's equivalent to believing. If you, if you believe the world is 6,000 years, it's equivalent to believing the distance from New York to San Francisco is 7.8 yards. 
I mean, that's the that's the scale of the disagreement. Oh, beyond a shadow of a doubt. But the reality is, I can measure the distance to New York from here exactly because it's in the present. The minute I step backwards, there's several things that I have to do. I have to assume how is the present connected to the past. Charles Lyell deliberately set out to remove a biblical approach. Lyell was a religious man. He had problems. You're with a religious man. Be honest, Richard. You're an atheist, I'm, right? That's not. That's not. That's not religion. I'm afraid it is. Yeah, that's your blind faith position for which you get nothing. Nevertheless, Lyell was a Christian, and Lyell had problems with, with Darwin. Lyell was actually quite reluctant to believe, to believe Darwin. Of course he did. But in the end, he's a disciple of his own disciple. Well, right. And in reality, anybody who sets out to remove Moses from anywhere has a problem with Jesus Christ, who said, if you don't believe Moses, you don't believe me. John chapter 5. So you can call him a Christian. I would call him a church man. The two so things you, would, you would place uh, what's written in the, in the Bible ahead of the whole of science, is what you're, what you're saying. Well, I don't think even Isaac Newton would have had a problem with that statement. Yes, because he did too. But what's happened between then and now is the change in the glasses we wear. And if I'm achieving anything in schools or colleges, I'm getting the kids to say, OK, let's be honest, how are we seeing the world and what questions are we asking as a result? If I'm going to be a scientist, I have to believe I'm real, the world is real, we can ask real and rational questions, they are Christian presuppositions, not Buddhist presuppositions, not Hindu presuppositions, we got them exclusively from a biblical worldview. Even the word geology is invented by the Bishop of Durham. So we've got a big, big system of Christian thinking yeah. which predates anything you're talking about. Well, I'm, which trying, actually to, I'm trying to work out whether, whether you're for real because I can't believe you're really sincere. I mean, I, I think you, you're trying to work out where you're, where you're coming from. You can't seriously believe what you're saying you believe. So I'm wondering what your, what your agenda is. Okay, well, you may have trouble with seriously believe, but I've been doing it for 20 years, so obviously it must be a good act. Right? Yeah, and I believe reality, it's obviously a good act. And in reality, you will find there are many young people who are now Christians as a result of what we decided, okay, the young people are having trouble with Christianity. What's their problem? It's creation versus evolution, nine times out of ten in this present yeah, no, world. I, I believe it. But what, what do you say when you meet somebody like a bishop? I mean, bishops don't go along with you, do they? I mean, they, they all accept evolution as God's way of doing things. Well, I had a good debate against John Polkinghorne, and yeah. he actually lost that debate, and it's worth seeing. Right? Well, it's available. Free on TV. In what sense did he lose it? Well, let's put it this way, politely we wiped the floor if you want to see the debate, because he was trying to argue the God of the Bible used evolution, and Charles Darwin would have been the first to disagree, because the God of the Bible says he made the world good, and evolution hasn't got such a concept. Everything's just natural. Yes. Death is part of the system. Well, that's the true. biblical God says there was no death until sin. So you can have a God, but it's your own imagination. Yeah. Right, so you have to cut that, that line in two. Yeah, what about thorns? Are you one of those who believes that th thorns didn't come into the world until after Adam fell? Yeah, I am, but you see, what you're really saying is that roses started out without thorns, but then my biology professor said that too. Yeah. Because we have to start from seaweed, which doesn't have thorns, and end up with roses. Yeah, but you're, so you're just playing with words now, aren't you? No, I'm not, because you have to explain where thorns come from too. But you take millions of years with the prince and the toad sort of yeah. story. Yeah, what about thorns being found in the same fossil beds as dinosaurs? And what do you make of that? Well, you've got to remember that the word geology, as I said, was invented by the Bishop of Durham. Our original geologists were all catastrophists. They were basically creationists in their concept. What you and I have done is relook at the geological yeah. record through Charles Lyell's eyes. I don't really and care about the original up. geologists. What about no, modern, modern geologists? Right, the fact is, you have a story about the rocks and the past. When I go out on a dinosaur dig and I dig up a dinosaur, it doesn't come up with a label that says, Hi, I was here 200 million years ago. I found it in the hole today, and then I proceed to try and work out a story which I actually can't get back to check. So you now think dinosaurs coexisted with humans? I've no problem with that at all. Okay. Then why don't we see fossil dinosaurs and fossil humans together? Why would you? I mean, if you had a worldwide flood today, would you expect kangaroos to be buried with bricks? Well, not necessarily. But <laughs> good, good. Um, you made the point I'm yeah, trying to make. But you would expect to see dinosaurs coexisting with uh, modern mammals. Okay. You Define your word coexisting. Do you mean in the same layer? Yes. Right, for the simple reason that you believe each layer got there one on top of the other and they all took vast amounts of time to get there. Now I'll tell you what I've done in reverse to challenge geologists with this. Go to the Grand Canyon, start at the top with Joe Tourist, it's a half a mile down to the bottom of the fossils, and in our orthodox geology we say that's about 300 million years worth of time. Okay, let's reverse the question we normally ask and say, if it really took that long, 
how much rock on average is laid down each year? Answer, about a fortieth of, you know, one, one by tenth of a fourth of an inch. It's, it's insignificant. So something's wrong with our story well, somewhere. It doesn't happen continuously, does it? it but if it doesn't, now you've shot evolution in the foot. Yeah, you because you, you have a fossil record full of gaps, which is Charles Darwin's biggest problem. Well, of course you have a fossil record full Good. of gaps. Everyone Good. is that. Great. <laughs> but you That's don't, one reason you don't, why you I see don't get fossils in the wrong order, do you? You don't find... As J.B.S. Holden said, fossil rabbits in the Cambria. Well, I haven't found a fossil rabbit in the Cambria, but I tell you what, I was out in Wales the other day, and here we have a lovely mixture of land plants all in with seashells, and I found exactly the same beds in the USA, and I'm convinced that Gary Gager, evolutionist as he was, right, and a creationist, but a catastrophist was right when he said the early catastrophist geologists were much more objective than the present day ones. And you, above all people, should know that we've got currently the, the thinking of punctuated equilibrium because it works better than Darwin's slow punctuated theory, but slow in a progression theory. Yeah, well, I wouldn't, it really that, does. I wouldn't, for me, Darwin's inspiration comes from, comes from evidence, but where do you think Darwin is coming from? Where did, where did Darwin get his inspiration from? Well, I think the BBC programme, which had him sitting outside the church on his daughter's gravestone, refusing to go inside, because we've got to remember he had a master's degree in theology, right, is a real key to understanding, as his great-great-grandson Richard wrote in Nature or Science, I don't know which one, that when Charles Darwin's favourite daughter Annie died, he turned his back on Christianity. It's only after that that he felt free to actually embrace all of his evolutionary theology, is what I call it. So his inspiration is really, I'm angry if there's a good God, why should my favourite daughter die and my poor little son be a good girl? A good question. His answer is ultimately, there's no God, everything just happens naturally. But Annie died in 1851 and Darwin mm -hmm. wrote a mm -hmm. pretty full sketch of his theory in 1844. Yeah, but he published it in what year? 1859. So he felt free after that to actually go with it. Yeah. Right? Before 1859, he's hesitant. He doesn't publish. Right? He's pushed on by competitors. He's pushed on by his own thinking. You can even see it in his books. When he starts out in book one, there's still a creator there. By the time you get to book two and three, his creator is out the window. But in 1844, he had this full, full theory. Um, why would he have developed that theory if he didn't think the evidence well, if you lived in Victoriana, England, and all the bishops were some sort of catastrophic creationist, you would have to be a brave man. Unfortunately oh, yeah. for him, he was independently wealthy, so he didn't really yeah. care in the end. But like most of us, he goes from his daughter dying up to the publishing, and there is a progression there, just as there is a progression after he publishes his first book, and it's more and more anti-Christian. Well, but you can't say that it was his daughter dying that inspired him, because he wrote it out... Well, I'd suggest you read what his great great grandson Richard said, because he would reach that sort of conclusion. That was a motivating factor. You don't think he was motivated by Satan? Uh, he never admits to anything like that. I don't have any evidence he went to seances, right? So I wouldn't be silly enough to say that. I thought, I thought I'd read that you had said it somewhere. Well, you'd have to find it for me. I can't remember saying anything like that at all. So yeah. I wouldn't, uh, you know, it's not what he says. Yeah. Um, what sort, sorts of things do you tell the children when you, when you lecture to, to children? Okay, we've just put a new three-dimensional website uh, up, which has got the whole course that we do in schools, particularly the public schools. So anybody who wants to hear the full answer can go to evidenceweb.net, click on education, and then they'll see the whole high school course, which deals with basically that question. If creation is true, or if evolution is true, how would you recognise the evidence if you fell out? Because my view of education is, if you can teach the kids how to think, you're miles ahead from teaching what to think. Because then they will be able to think, which is what this country and every other country in the West needs. I'm certainly all for teaching them to think. Good, great, excellent. We agree on one thing. <laughs> well, I'm not sure we really do, actually. But, uh, but still, there must be a lot of money behind you if you can put together three-dimensional websites. And we have supporters, and folks can go and see us at evidenceweb.net, and they're free to make donations, but no, you wouldn't say this is the way to get rich. I used to earn a lot more when I was lecturing in geology for technical education. You were lecturing in geology? Yeah, for you technical were, education. You a degree in geology, then? I got a degree in geology, yeah, yeah. and um, in education, too. So. Are, are your donations tax-free? Uh, in different countries, they are. Like, you have a system here, they have a different system in America, so it would depend on what each group 
any country. So which, tax, which countries is it tax free in? Uh, it's tax free in America, in England. I mean, you have your you have your sort of reverse system. It's tax free. I don't get tax free. So you, you have that in America. It's a, a slightly different system, but yeah, the result is the same. That means that in Britain, you are your own enterprise is supported by the British taxpayer in, in effect. Yeah, well, because you've got to remember the government got the money off the taxpayer in the first I place, so please that. don't say it's their money. <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do remember that. The point I love to make is that it's God who provides for all of us, atheists included. Yeah, well, I mean, tax-free charities are supposed to be good for the public. They're supposed to be good for education or mm -hmm. good for something like that. Can you really yeah. claim that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, and if, if, it, if the question were raised they suggested in to these TV crews that they should come to schools and watch us, yeah. right, and see the results yeah. in kids who learn how to think. And again, go to evidenceweb.net, click on the Search for the Origin Life program, yeah, well, and learn how to think yourself. Good. I shall do that. Okay. It, 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 it does rather rather seem to me that it's rather like some going back um, more than a century, actually, mm -hmm. uh, um, so a century and a half. Well, we had a very clever premier in our state, and somebody accused him of turning back the clock 30 years and said, yes, but then we had no inflation and no unemployment. So I have no problem with saying, yes, I had this concept from that long ago, but I grew up outside the church, so I didn't grow up brainwashed with this. It's the result of finishing my university course, listening to students say, if evolution is true, why can't we see it happening? Third year genetics question the professor. Right. You and take that question seriously, do you? Oh, yeah. yeah. And the professor, his answer I took even more seriously when he said, well, it happened so slowly you wouldn't expect to see it happening. And all of a sudden oh. I thought, hang on. And that's true. Good. So in other words, what you don't see happening is not science. It's unobservable. And you were the first person you're to using the on word PBS. C. You're, looking the, <laughs> you're using the word C as meaning C within one lifetime. If a phenomenon takes millions of years, of course you're not going to see it. Which means you have a faith position does not and mean, you need to admit it. It means you have to use other there. evidence than the, than the evidence of one man's eyes. It means you have oh, to Oh, sorry. Darwin was only 1859. That's only 150 years ago almost, right? And you have haven't seen it, and I haven't seen it, so please stop calling it science. Teaching see, philosophy was more history. seeing than just seeing with one man's eyes. You can see through geology size, you can see through instrument size. You know perfectly well that, that we have instruments that can measure things that the human eye can't see. And now you we're might back well to say the you start. don't believe in electrons. Now we're back to the start okay. because you have to assume what you're seeing now is always applied. I mean, that's your faith <coughs> position you can't to see remove electrons. Moses. You can't see electrons. And, and, and do, you, I mean, do you not believe in electrons? Well, I'm afraid if you can't see God, do you not believe in God? Let's be, let's be objective, the question, Richard. The question. I have you, no problem with electrons, but well, they're why not? Because you can't see them. No, no, no. I can How actually you know run them through bits of paper, right? See That's the right. results. Have instruments that but the them. minute you start to turn that backwards and say it was doing the same thing 150, 200 million years ago, please admit to the audience your faith and call what you're teaching philosophy or atheism if you're going to really be honest. And my time is up. That's ridiculous. But anyway, thank Good. you very much. Thank you.